Hello, hello, hello. How are you? Welcome back or press hello. I don't know, you know, usual. So this is my channel. It's written in Hebrew, but you know, it's okay. You can breathe. The change happened by itself. Or just plain Uriel Amatir, Uriel Tamir Taler, whatever. Money, money, money. Georgia our money. Ever since I remember myself, I think I was five, I remember the song uh, of Abba. Money, money, money. Na, 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 na. And, and I literally remember myself going on the bus when I was five and looking at the bus driver and thinking, hmm, I can do this job, but I'll be bored in a month. I don't know what made me think that, but ever since I remember myself, ever since I can really make this, I've been starting to record. <laughs> um, there was always something about money. Now, the funny thing is, I was growing up in a kibbutz. A kibbutz in a kibbutz, the old kind of kibbutz, and now it's my kibbutz is gone. It's, uh, you know, some kind of community. Um, but in the old, old school, um, you didn't think about money. <laughs> you have the dining hall. You have uh, your own budget, you know, from the kibbutz which you buy all kinds of stuff, which are subsidized in the small stores, like really, really, really cheap. Uh, you don't pay for laundry, you don't pay for electricity, you don't pay for water, you don't pay rent, you don't pay. <laughs> and when I was 15, almost 16, or when I was 16, I think, I started getting my own budget, <laughs> which was nothing compared like, you know, money. But, I, you know, for not having to pay any, anything at all, which was, you know, allowance. <laughs> For just being a part of the kibbutz. Now, with all that, I still had a huge, huge issue with money. I remember when I was 19 and I had a Dutch girlfriend, uh, which was who was 19, 18, sorry. Um, and I remember us having a huge, huge explosion. Why? Because I had a budget paper which said I have a minus 2,000. I still have food, I still have place to sleep, I have everything I need. Everything. <laughs> What's a big deal? And the money was is coming. Like the next in like every three months I had another budget. I had a huge, huge explosion because I was so scared of not having what. Now the reason to all this uh, is now known as uh, how do you call it in English? Um, generation. You know, things that goes from generation to generation, you find the word for it. I've learned about it when I was in Australia in my rebirthing workshops, my, the workshop I participated in. And the thing is that when we hold on some, on, on some kind of a trauma and not work with it and not letting it go, uh, if we don't do this, so the next generation will hold it and they will have to do it. And if don't, they don't, if they don't, so the next generation will. That's why our generation, my generation, is working so hard because the generation before us didn't know anything about emotional work. It didn't start until you know the 70s, 60s, 70s. They didn't know what's going on. It was you know really in the beginning. Today, everybody work on it. <laughs> if not, why not? Um, so emotional work, which help helps letting go of all kinds of traumas wasn't known back then, and that's why we have to do all the work for generations and generations, not only our parents, but the, their parents, and so on and so on. Before that, we used to, oh, we're angry? <laughs> <laughs> oh, you hurt me? I hurt you. <laughs> Today we know um, we can do it differently um, and still have a great life and be, be the man. You know? <laughs> Bullshit. Anyway. Money, 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 it was always an issue in my brain because my mom did, and her parents did, and their family did. My mom's side comes from the um, Spanish uh, exile. Uh, we moved to Portugal, and then to Italy, and then to Holland, where we started the, the Portuguese community. We, my family. Yeah. Um, 
And my grandparents, my mom's parents, uh, understood, you know, because of the Germans and the Holocaust, what's going on, and they ran, ran away. Luckily, that's one here. Um, my German side, well, I don't know how much the, about them, but also they understood, my grandfather understood what's going on, ran, and that's why I'm alive. But the money started, the money issues started from my mom's side, as much as I know, of course. As much as I understood, we come from a really, really rich family. Our family is called Ricardo, which means rich man, understood. I, that's what I've been told. Um, and probably that money helped us exile and run away from the ex 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 extinction, <laughs> acquisition. Um, until this day, I remember learning all my life how money doesn't grow on trees and you should be aware, uh, go away from getting presents and go away of making money and run away from, you know, all that bullshit. Yeah, and everybody heard that. Yeah, I know, you did too. Um, yet I took this issue to heart. <laughs> I guess having grown up with um, being bullied all around and grown up to have a CPTSD, when I come to points of having issues with money, I have fear of extinction. Like literally a fear of going away, gone. I don't know what to do. It stops everything in my life. And yeah, everybody, like money is the basic, of course. And the thing is, I worked on it. I had to work on it. Otherwise, I would be staying at home and do absolutely nothing. And that's what led me to fly to into Sydney only, with only $120 uh, to see what happens. <laughs> yeah, it was a big step. Don't try it at home unless you're ready. Um, and I did all kind of steps like that until I noticed, until my mind could see how many, not how many, but... um that it's, it's possible to go and live without money or to have a, a period of time of no money and survive. So there's no, no need to <laughs> become so... <laughs> can't do anything. Why I'm talking about this? Because I'm in one of those times. <laughs> I didn't have one of those times for a really long time. I won't go into details because it's not only my details. And if there's one thing I've learned from my parents, which I still hold on to, is not to, not to, uh, how do you say it in, in English? In plain, it says, don't make other people, other person white in public. So I don't want to do that. Why I'm in this situation? The thing is, I'm in this situation for all sorts of reasons. It's not only that thing. It's only also because for some reason my website doesn't work. <laughs> for some reason, whatever. It's got to do with all kinds of issues. And yet, what I've learned until today, and I've practiced a lot with all kinds of areas, including having no money, having no girlfriend, having no place to stay, having no work, having no nothing, you know, just see what happens. Um, I've learned that this situation simply change at some point. At some point, like you're really uh, weak and can't do anything and don't have any money and no work and no, no help and da, da, da. And it's hell. Yes, I know it's hell. I've been there so many times. Um, and still with it, and that's what I keep reminding myself, and that's what helps me do this live and smile and not go through what I'm going through right now, is that I know for certain, without doubt, that this situation, this period of time, whatever it is, whatever caused this, whatever is in the back of it, whatever the situation is, whatever I have to do to change it, you know, all those, like, what do I have to do in order to change it? It's all my life. What do I have to do? What do I have to do? What do I have to... And today, you know, it always comes to the point, and I've noticed it many, many times, that I come to the point that I just sort of give up. You know, I just, 
don't know. Just don't know what to do. And I let go. <laughs> what do I let go? I let go of that I think, that I know, that I need to do something. This, this stress, that's what I'm letting go. And this is exactly what I'm always using, the metaphor of shooting the arrow. At some point, you'll have to let go of the arrow. The best is to let go when you still can control the muscles, not until you're like this. But at the end of it, if you can't, and it works for me all the time because it's, I'm having a hard time of letting go, my biggest. Um, I've noticed at some point, life just takes away my the reins. You know, they're just like, okay, you just sit back, we'll take care of it. It's not that I can sit down and say like, oh, change up it by itself. Do nothing. No. What I've noticed, and that's uh, what I always do with myself, I always do inner work. Always. Always. Like I can't remember a moment in my life, a moment in time, that I didn't do any kind of inner work, inner exploration, inner um, get to know. <laughs> like, hey, have this is me. Oh, I can do this. Oh, I can do that. Oh, what can I do this? How can I control my emotions? I can control my thoughts. I do do this. I do this since I, I remember myself. Uh, probably before, because my daughter speaks the same, and she's four, not five. And she also says, like, yeah, I love to explore things and check them out. Okay. The thing is that the more I get to know myself, the more I get to see myself in all those kind of situations, including now having no money, don't know how I'm going to close the months, don't know how I'm going to pay for the car, which is in the garage, don't know anything. I'm like, <laughs> I focus more instead of how to get the money, and I do focus on it, of course, you know, I'm you know, doing what I can. Mostly I focus is on the inside. It's like, how do I feel right now? How does it feel to be weak? And how does it feel to be with no help? How does it feel to be Again, in the unknown, how does it feel to be that, 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 whatever you will come up with? Because at the end of it, <laughs> and that's the best in those, the, I just heard a song, uh, it says, um, the wisdom of the dark times. You can't trust your healing by Trevor something. I'll, I'll put the link if you want. But the thing is that this is the, the wisdom of the dark times, is that my mind, I use my mind to explore how I feel right now. And at the end of it, my mind will, after it will suddenly change <laughs> somehow, at the end of it, my mind will remember that he, it had been in the worst of times. It had seen hell, literally hell. And it's okay. <laughs> Perfectly fine. Why is it so important? Because you're going to see hell again. I give you a guarantee. Why? Because this is life. <laughs> you stop seeing hell when you stop seeing it as hell. And you stop seeing it as hell when you get to know it again and again and again and again and again and again and again. Anything you do again and again and again, you stop seeing it as a hard thing. You start seeing it as, oh, big deal. Okay, big deal. So I won't have any money. So I'll get another job. Today I'm handling myself. I used to find a you know, job like this. No problem. I can still. Today I know I have CPTSD, so I can't hold on to jobs. So I have to get my business to work. So I'm working on it. Second, I'm a father. It's a different. I have no power whatsoever. Um, so it's a new area, a new era for me. Everything is different. So I'm, again, my mind is like. <laughs> so I always have to remind myself, remind. You know, I remind it. I put the mind I want. I recreate it. And I say, oh, no, <laughs> it's fine. Okay, you feel anxiety. Okay, you feel depression sometimes. Okay, you can't hold on sometimes. It's fine. Breathe. You're going to go through this. I know it. Why? Because I've been through it many, 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 many times in different, different areas, in different, different eras, in different, different situations, in different, different realms, in different, different situations and around the world, in different countries with different people. 
I checked it again and again and again. What happens when I don't know what to do? All I have to do is... And that's what helped me. It took me out of my biggest depression ever. It's not that I'm not depressed, but today it's like, okay, depression. Big deal. Sometimes it's harder, sometimes it's easier. Yes, I can tell you that I know that as long as I breathe, I can still change anything I want. Even if I don't know what to do, what to do in order to change or what to change in order to change everything. What I'm always focusing on is instead of changing things, I focus on my mind learning how, that it can go through anything that comes along. Because I noticed that no matter how big, is, big the dream I managed to, uh, to live, and I did, <laughs> at some point it became a sport. It's like, oh yeah, let's do, uh, yeah, let's do that. It's, it just became, oh, it's easy. Let's do that. But at some point it's like, yeah, okay, another. Okay, big deal, let's do another. Yeah, okay. And at some point it's like, yeah, okay, big deal. <laughs> not, a, not a dream. Yeah, okay. And in some point, and then you go through area uh, times in your life, and everybody goes through. You know, it's hell. It's hard. It's fucking hard. Sorry for the language, but it's, it's those times you can't explain those times any easier. Oh, I mean, you can. I can't. And the thing is that I started laughing at some point that if there is a hell after life, you know, and I would go there because I did something bad. And Satan will see me. <laughs> like the only thing he will ask is like, "Is still two sugars, or would you like one now?" <laughs> he knows me so much. I've been to hell so many times, so many times. My mind is been through darkness. I can't describe. I can't. I wish, but I can't. And today I can, you know, define it as CPTSD. So you can maybe read about it. So you can maybe get more experiences from other people that, yeah, it's fucking hard to live with this. Your mind is on full on alert 24 7. It's hard. And it's when everything is fine and you have help. It's so better. <laughs> okay. I can't, you know, it depends on you. Um, yet when you don't have help, when you don't get the support you need, when you don't know what to do next, because no one comes to you and says, it's okay, you can breathe, the change happened by itself, I'll be there. It's hard. That's why I keep spreading this, by the way. <laughs> it's in Hebrew, yes, but you know, it's okay, you can breathe, you know, translate it. I want everybody who comes along those times, and because I know them so hard, so much hard, you know, I met them so many times, is that you all know that it's okay. Even if you don't understand, just remember that. Because as, as long as you remind yourself, you remind yourself thinking in a good way. Remind yourself believing in a good way. Remind yourself in love. You know, not in fear. Oh, what would I do? What would I do? What do? Instead, like, it's okay. I breathe. I can change, I can feel, I can ask questions, I can breathe. Damn! You can do anything without free. Four, sorry. You can do anything, anything with four exercises. This is exactly what I do all my life. Yes, I went through workshops. Yes, I went through 30 years of therapy. Yes, I've been through many, many places. Yet I noticed that those four exercises, those four abilities, those four... Uh, things, whatever you want to call them, they happen along the way no matter what. Not because it has anything to do with outside, it's because it's in our system. We change, we feel, we ask questions, and we breathe all the time. And when you get this, whatever, when you get better at it, in feeling change, in, in handling change, or feeling your emotions, or asking questions, or breathing, just imagine, just the ability to... Stop anything you do and breathe. Can you do that? Amazing. That's an amazing ability, by the way. Yes, it's automatic, but the moment we get it, get attached to it, you know, get you know in line with it, 
or align with it, it's kind of like shifting the gear into the right place. Yeah, sometimes we have to be in full speed. Sometimes we have to slow down. Or maybe we have to lower the gear in order to go up. You know, the, the breathing itself helps us settle down into the right speed and feel okay with it. <laughs> and the thing is that money had been the basic of pretty much most of our fears because, you know, it's, uh, it's food, it's rent, it's uh, yeah, food and rent, <laughs> pretty much. <laughs> food and rent. Most important thing, right? We need to live. We need to sleep somewhere. We need to feel comfort in some level. At some level, we have to be comfortable. And my mind, our mind can do many things in order for to do that. The idea is what I've learned. Yeah, we can get along with anything. <laughs> yes, we can. But in my mind... As much as I don't like to fight reality, I love to settle into it and see what I can change in it. And I've learned that the more I just go inside instead of fighting it, I just see what's going on and it just slowly, slowly start to evolve, start to change and start to manifest into different things. The point is to keep in the direction here in your, or here or wherever, in like in your being, <laughs> just know that you can do anything, that you can go through any kind of hell, any kind of hell, and you'll be fine. It's, it's a, I don't promise you, it's not a guarantee, because life can take you like that. Yet, as long as you live, as long as you can breathe, you can change anything. Not because you're special. Everybody can. <laughs> Change happens by itself. It's not ours. It's not like, oh, we do. It's so many things that, you know, uh, get along. Like this uh, uh, contributes to this and this uh, pushes that. And this, like, everything is entangled. And it's impossible for us to know exactly what we did. <laughs> and many times it's not even us. Many times somebody said something to someone and ta -ta 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 and it got to us. Our, or at least that's exact, that's what I found for myself. I'll say it for myself, maybe you'll get along with it. What I found that I can change at the end of it is how I experience life. Is it's pretty much is I have a period of time, let's say 500 thousands day thousand hours you know or seconds you know five hundred thousand seconds you know it's very easy to and now <laughs> my job or my job is for me it's not my job it's not like if i want to do it it's, it would be it's it's for me if i want to feel good all i have to do is to be more in love than fear <laughs> to be more in my in myself in my being to be in the feeling of love, to be in love with life, to get to know everything, to love and accept everything as is, more than fearing all of them. Of course, yes, easier said than done. Duh. <laughs> Yet, what's easy is, like I said before, it's what you do again and again and again. So yes, for now, it's easier said than done. True. It's also hard. It's, yeah, it's, it's hard to go through those emotions. It's not easy, yet it's easier when every and when all society will start doing it. When we're gonna give ourselves two, three years to go through any hell that we go through, and yes, we need it. Sometimes in life, we just need to you know have a break. When society just understands that, it will stop being so hell, because people will just knock on the door and say, "You need a hand? Would you like for me to sit with a, for you for a coffee? Would you like to, for me to be?" On, my, on your back and call, just in case. You know how good that feels when you have someone like that? When society starts working like that, nothing to do. It won't be hell. Yes, future, I know. Yet we are on the way. We are on the way. I know because I've been watching it for my 
past four decades. And it's going there. Yes, it's hard now. The corona, the COVID, it just poof, smacked everything. And that's exactly the good thing because it took everyone out of the comfort zone. It took, hey, guys, wake up. <laughs> and that's why people, so many people woke up, of course. <laughs> Duh. It was obvious when it started. Um, and the thing is that, yes, we are going through hell right now. And I'm sure I'm not the only one who goes through money issues right now. I know it is. I know it's not, it's not something I need to believe or something. I know many, many of my friends are having issues with money right now. And yes, COVID smacked everybody and smacked many fire and many losses that lost their jobs. And I can tell you that as long as long as you can breathe, as long sorry, let's start beginning. As long as you can change, and if you can, I'm sure you change your T-shirt in the past 24, 48 hours, right? <laughs> Pretty sure. So you can change things. Good. Can you feel? I'm sure you ran away from it. <laughs> I'm sure because we all do. But that's what we learned. It's not a judgment. We have learned to run away from our emotions. Yes, it's okay. Get to know. Can you ask questions? I'm sure you're asking what the beep is he talking about. Good. You can ask questions. And you can breathe. Well, if you couldn't. So, you can go through anything. Anything. Yes, you can go through this shitty hell of part of life. And yes, I can tell you I'm going through one, not one of the hardest time of my life. And damn, it has a contest. It has some competition. I'm going through three decades of hell. And yes, the last five years, wow. In the main three years, in the main two and a half years, ended six, seven months ago. And yet, here, here we go. I go through another period of time. Of, oh! And I remember that change happened by itself. And yes, I might not know what I'm going to do for money. I don't know. I literally don't know. But I've been there. I've been there. My mind remember. Yes, I didn't know in Sydney when I landed at 2, at two o'clock in the, in the afternoon. I didn't know what I will do. But at 8.30, I closed the phone in some hostel for a job for the next day. At 7 o'clock, I started working as a bricklayer or, you know, helper. I never stopped working in Sydney. Shh, don't tell them. But as many people there, I managed to live through it. And I can tell you, you can do anything. I'm not special. I might be... My okay, I my speciality, everyone is special about something, I believe. And you have a speciality. Find it. My speciality is running forward and don't tell me what to do. I always always been like that. When I was eight, I guided four people at 50 plus per, uh, friends of my parents through a trip to a place in a sorry, a hike, sorry, to a place I I've known but I never walked there. It's about an hour and a hour and a half walk, or maybe two. I never walked to there before or after. I was eight. When I was nine, I saw we were climbing a mountain in the with the class, and I looked at them. Ah, oh, it's boring, and I just like, yeah, boom. <laughs> yes, the teacher was was very mad, and I've learned not to do it. But I was nine. I ran like that a mountain, <laughs> and two kids actually came with me. I'm like, why? <laughs> This is my speciality. This is my uniqueness. This is my uh, ability. I don't like people telling me what to do or how to do things. I love to run forward and find it on my own. This is me. And this is why I found these exercises you can always do. You can always change. You can always feel. You can always ask questions. You can always feel. Uh, breathe. Sorry. It's in your system. You don't have to do anything about it. <laughs> you just pay attention to it. And when you understand what you can do with these four exercises, trust me, you start believing you can do much, much more. And on that, I can tell you, tell you trust me. Because those four abilities are your own. And when you get, when you understand, when you let it in, how much strength and power that means, whew, 
<laughs> you start living your dreams as a sport. At some point, you'll be boring. I tell your head. But in some point, you'll be like, yeah, let's do that. Yeah, let's do that. <laughs> because you'll understand you can do anything. And this is exactly what, what's going on in this world. Many people do understand it. And this is what pretty much what I've been teaching, what I've been, uh, this is what I'm, I am passing through because we can do anything, which means not to take away from others. No. <laughs> we can actually create a world that will be good, calm. How's that? <laughs> we can, if everyone can get anything they want because they know they can. No anxiety, no is it? <laughs> No depression. Oh, am I going to get it? Because you know you're okay. And everyone help everyone because everyone has enough. This is what I'm aiming for. This is what many people aim for. Many of my friends and many of people I don't know, but I see it online. And yes, at some point, this money issue will evolve or will dissolve and become something else. And I will have an issue with something else at some point. But the thing is that my aim, at least, because I've learned it's always some kind of like, <laughs> or this, or that, and this, and that, and this, and that, and this, and that, there's always something, always, yeah, existence. So my aim is like, put my mind on, Automatic, <laughs> let's say, move. And to pay attention to now, which helps me much better to live in love, to be... <sighs> because every time I go into my mind, it's a... Boom, boom. Oh, what will I do? Boom. What will it happen? Who will help me? Boom. Explosion of explosions, of explosion of anxiety and anxiety and anxiety. Fireworks. My mind get to know you nice <laughs> uh, nice to get to know you um and the thing is that for me as a cpt is the diagnosis um and it stood way before the diagnosis is that what helps me is to shut the door close the window put the air conditioning so they you know so my mind will keep breathing and let go <laughs> let life work and the more i've gone through it and for the past three decades i've been experiencing change as a mandatory thing in my life it's my main practice today i don't I, years and don't think about it it's just a part of me and i've learned that the less i do <laughs> the better my life is and it's not that i don't do the do is here. The, the less I <laughs> try to solve things, try to the, the more I like, yeah, everything is fine, everything is okay, everything will be fine. I remember myself, I remind myself, yes, and like, and I do my inner work, like, yeah, okay, I feel anxiety. Hmm, where does that anxiety come from? Okay, that's fear. Fear, okay, I get to know you, fear. Oh, yeah, you're doing. <sighs> so I feel fear, mm -hmm. and I feel confusion. Why everything doesn't work? Okay, interesting. And this is exactly what I do on life. This is exactly what I do on daily life. And yes, sometimes life goes like this. And every time when I go like this, I go inside. Imagine even a sea. If when you see an ocean, <laughs> the waves are like nuts. Like nuts. When you go underwater, everything's fine. Get to know your emotions as a safe zone. It's an amazing place. I used to be scared of them as hell. Shitless care. And today, they are my safe zone. I go back to them. <sighs> Confusion. Frustration about the site. Doesn't work. You know, I, the money thing doesn't work for some reason. Fear. Anger. You know, about all kinds of people who don't help. So I just go into the emotions and I just... Let myself feel them. And I breathe. Breathing is part of feeling. So when you go, like, if you don't know what to do, just... If you don't have a sticker, you don't have anything like this, first of all, if I hope the website will be fine soon. But if you don't, just take a marker, 
put a big paper on your wall and just say, right, it's okay, you can breathe, the change happened by itself. Yes, I wrote it, but you can just, you know, for yourself, just remind yourself. Because change does happen by itself. It's not mine. <laughs> I wrote it. <laughs> but it's not mine. I'm not the first who said it way before me. I simply wrote that, that sentence. It's okay, you can breathe, the change happened by itself. But that's it. It's my way of saying truth. <laughs> it's not mine. So just write it and remind yourself. Remind. It's your how your mind is, you experience your life. So if your mind is at ease and calm, your life will be at ease and calm. Yes, you go through hell, meet like you know, like I do. There's always something unconscious that comes along. It's okay, we learn, we go through it. And at some point, we stop being agitated with it because it's just a part of the process. The thing is that to, the more you calm your mind, the more life will just solve itself. The change will happen by itself. You'll be like, wow, true. God damn it, cool. It keeps amazing me, by the way. I've been saying it for 14 years. And every time I see it, it's like, Holy shit, it's true. <laughs> My mind has a hard time acknowledging it. But, and that's why I keep saying it to everyone, so everyone will keep saying it to me. So remember, change happens by itself. I don't need to do anything specific. I don't need to be anxiety, in anxiety. I don't need to be depressed. I don't need to be anything. I don't need to know anything. I can just know that I don't know. It's fine. And you can too. Money, money, money must be funny in the big one's world. So maybe it changes because it's you know, women kind of taking control. Um, I see money, let's say, had been a very big currency for a very, very long time. And at some point will evolve to the next thing. Don't know what. But as, as I see it, and that's exactly what I'm aiming, that's exactly as, as except for me, but you know, for life, for the world, the world is moving into oneness, into working together. The world, people had enough of fighting. Come on. <laughs> you want, enough. People want to wake up, family or no family, partner or no partner, be at peace that they can eat and live peacefully go do what they love and some yes yeah, some is working some people love cleaning <laughs> some people love being a lawyer some people love doing things with wood or metal <laughs> yeah people will work it's okay <laughs> yet they will do it out of love there will people are changing careers for the past two decades i've heard that so many times how many people are changing careers now and it used to be unheard of when I just started my life. People had uh, careers from 20 to 65. Now, if you don't have two or three careers, something is off with you. You have to change. You have to move along. <laughs> it's in, in TV, in, in the Matrix. Everyone knows it already. Thank God. So just remind yourself, change happens by itself. It happens by itself. It does. And when it's hard, when it's like, Ugh! check what you're feeling. Your mind is having a hard time accepting one of those emotions. Check what kind of emotion, what kind of energy in emotions goes throughout you. What is it? What is it? Fear, anger, frustration, confusion, jealousy, guilt, uh, happiness, joy. Maybe I'm just happy. Why not? <laughs> Why not? calmness. What is it? The moment your mind acknowledges it, just like, oh, it's that? <laughs> I can't explain it. Just do it. <laughs> it's in, it, moving from hell to, he to Eden, like that. It's like, oh. It's anger. Okay, anger. I'm angry. Yeah, it makes sense. I'm angry. <laughs> I'm frustrated. What doesn't matter? <laughs> as long as I acknowledge it, I acknowledge it, sorry. That's it. 
my mind, oh, okay. Now the energy goes on. Okay. <laughs> I'm scared. Okay. I don't know where the money comes from. So I'm scared. Will come from. Like, okay. Sure. And yes, when I go through it, you know, in some in some point in the day, my mind goes through there, and that's why I keep saying it's okay. I don't know what to do. I don't know where the money will come from. I don't know what will happen to make this website work already and make people know about all those things. Maybe this will help. Um, but don't worry, it's not the first I've been talking about it. It doesn't work for some reason. And I've noticed, I've noticed in my life is that there's a fourth stage to change and it's called the stage of nothingness, I call it. Or the uh, golem, you know, between the golem, I don't know how you call it in English. You know, when you have the capitular and you have the cocoon, sorry, and then you have the butterfly. And I call, and I best like this to call this time is the Chinese um, bambook, Chinese bambook. I've talked about it, so I've did with this. Chinese bamboo, if you plant it and you water it, you're going to water it for five years without seeing any apparent change. Apparent change. It will seem that, what's going on with this plant? Why doesn't it work? Why doesn't it grow? <laughs> and you can go there. But, <laughs> yet, if you know what I know now, you'll be patient. Why? Because in those five years, the plant sends roots all over itself as much as it can, probably, you know, rocks and whatever, you know, the, the land allows. And it needs a lot of water, so you have to water it. Um, but for five years, you don't see that under, under your feet, there are many, many, many roots. And then, within two, three months, you can read about it. It's not something I'm making up. Within two, three months, you have a forest of bambook. Five years, you don't see shit. And in three months, boom, you have a wall. <laughs> and I've, I've experienced this stage so many times. And yes, it's the hardest for me still. <laughs> yes. After so many times, it's still the hardest stage of, for me. Because it's a stage that says to me, well, just breathe. You can't do shit. <laughs> you just accept nothing happens. Nothing. I can't I love seeing things move. I love changing things. I love when when I see things change, I'm okay. I'm fine. <laughs> so when I don't see change, I get anxiety. Exactly. How do you say it? Whatever. I feel anxiety and I feel sometimes depressed and I feel like really agitated. So I remind myself that even if I don't see it, change is an undercurrent most of the times. All the times, by the way, sometimes you see the bubble. <laughs> um, so yeah, there is this stage. So if you're going through that, if you don't know what you want, first stage, first stage wanting. Second stage, paying attention. Third stage is emotions. You feel everything. First stage is nothingness or bambook, Chinese bambook. And the first, fifth stage is change happens. Happened in the past. So if you if you recognize them, desire, wanting, yeah, paying attention, paying attention, sorry, emotions, nothingness, bambook, or, well, in the fifth, just go to celebrate. If you recognize yourself as everything just doesn't move, like you're hitting an imaginary walls all the time, you don't know what's happening. You're doing everything you can, but nothing works. Do you know that? Yeah, I know that very much. Very, very well, sorry. Um, so yeah, when you go through that, just know. It's the stage of the Chinese bamboo. You will see a forest soon. Just wait. You did everything you did, you could. I could say to myself right now, and also to you, if you if you're there, you did everything you can. You'll know it because nothing. You'll hit walls all the time. Nothing. Nothing will work. You like nothing. Just relax. 
I hope I'm relaxed. So, yeah, okay, long enough. <laughs> I didn't plan on 45 minutes, but yeah. By the way, I don't know if I shared it before. The reason, one of the reasons I'm, I love to talk, um, and pretty much the main reason for me is it, it's my therapy, it's my medicine. I it helps me acknowledge things. <laughs> Um, it helps me understanding things. Uh, it helps me see things. Uh, it's like thinking out loud. So thank you for being there, uh, YouTube, <laughs> or oh, whoever is listening. Um, it helps me breathe, breathe better. Hope it does anything good for you. <laughs> so it's not just me. I don't like being, I hate being selfish. Uh, it's an issue in me. Um, yeah, but I'll talk about it in another life. Enough for now. Anyway, ciao amigos. Keep breathing. You're doing fine. Okay? Breathing, laugh as much as you can. Okay? Ciao amigos.